this is going to be day two of the 1989-1990 uh, uh, camper. Will it run and drive 250 miles? So last time, uh, or day two, wherever we are in this video, uh, was not able to get it running. Uh, they would just turn over, turn over, turn over, turn over, turn over. And uh, a couple things happened. I ran out of time. I ended up having to get home uh, to deal with some stuff. And then I realized on my way up, halfway up, I had forgotten half the crap that I needed. And I wrote a look, I, I write lists all the time and I still end up leaving half of what I needed at home. Meters, test lights, you name it. All that stuff I ended up leaving at home. Um, and then I'm not like Wes from Watch Wes Work or Derek from Vice Grip Garage where I basically just throw parts at things. And it helps to know what engine you have. So I thought it was the big block Chevy, the uh, 7.4 liter. Um, yeah, I thought it was a 7.4. It's not. It's actually a small block Chevy. It's the 350 5.7 uh, TBI. So it helps to actually know what motor you're running on so that you have the right parts for it. And uh, so now that I know that, I have the right parts and um, just throw some parts at it. And if it runs, it runs. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So Andy said he had it running. Uh, it might be a way where it's kind of listing a little bit. We, there might be low fuel in it, so I got the fuel cans as well. I, I don't know if the fuel gauge works in it. We'll have to take a look at that. So, all right, let's give this a second shot and see if we can get it driving back home, 250 miles. All right, like I said, this is a uh, Chevy small block 350, not the big block like I thought. And I ended up having to buy more uh, uh, battery terminals here because when I was here the other day, I uh, undid the battery and then proceeded to drop one of these down in the wheel well or into the engine bay. And of course, you know, lucky me, it doesn't fall straight through and land on the ground. You know, usually like your 10 millimeter socket does. Uh, I got some stuck somewhere in the frame in here and I can't see it and I don't have a uh, magnet or, or uh, what you call it, a uh, claw with, with me. So, whatever, go out and buy new ones. fuel in it. Looks like we might need to get a new fuel tank. A little wet. <laughs> I just did it again. Alright, I need two hands to fish that out. Alright. We got the battery in. Was able to get that battery plug out. Let's see if we... All right, can hear the fuel pump running. All right. So these injectors, I got to take a look at that. Um, I was able to try and get it started, and I was able to get it started off starter fluid. So I obviously have a fuel issue. Still have to. All right. Well, this is what I fire off right now for whatever reason. So I'm just gonna end up. Uh, changing the spark plugs in the EGR valve right now while the engine's hot or the engine's cool I should say it it's trying to I, I can see that I'm now getting fuel uh, to the injectors so um, that was a little bit of a fuel issue and it looks like the fuel gauge does work right now because it's at half tanks or we're we're, we're, we're leaning a lot towards the right hand side I think the pickup is kind of over here so we'll Everything's gonna shift it over and we just were below the pickup tube the other day. But I was able to, before I left, get it running on uh, the starter fluid. So I do know that it runs and I could sit there and baby it and run it off the starter fluid. Uh, so 
we'll try and figure something out here. But let me just let change all the plugs and whatnot, and uh, we'll get going from there. All right, got it running. It's a little cold. Got new spark plugs on this side. Change the spark plugs over here. But uh, I've got a new cap and rotor and uh, ignition control module. So we'll get that side out. All right, seems to be idling okay. Um, still gonna change that EGR valve. And I don't have a socket small enough for the ignition control module. There's a little nut on there. I don't have a socket here small enough. So we'll have to wait to change it till we get home. Seems to be smoothed out. Uh, all new spark plugs, new uh, rotor and cap. So. A little bit of a tool. I'm gonna try and get this spun around. Brakes are a little can't tell if the brakes are, I mean, they're definitely soft. They gotta be changed, but coming down the hill there, a little. Oh, windshield wipers don't work. Oh, clean those off. It says I got just over a, an eighth of a tank, so it looks like the uh, fuel gauge might be working. The uh, brake cable, the parking brake cable is stuck a little bit. I gotta try and get that freed up. Yeah. Window somehow won't go down. Checked outside, all the lights work, so the headlights, brake lights, tail lights work, so we should be able to get this thing moving on home and then redo it. I'm completely gut the inside here. No. But like I said, uh, it's dry, doesn't look like there could be any leaks or stuff like that. He had uh, redone the roof, so. Alright. See what we can do today to get out of here. Might have to have uh, Samantha come up, pick up the baby Duramax, and bring that home. So, <laughs> yeah, tires don't look too too bad. Put some air in them. I got uh, my little Ryobi 18 volt, which air pump. So I'll get that taken a look at, but all the rest of the tires, yeah, see, all, all sliding. It's just muddy. It got really, really warm uh, the last couple days. It's been down in the 20s and 30s, and then for some reason it's in the 50s today. So all the tires actually look pretty good. So, yeah, the ground's, ground's really slick. So when I was backing it up, coming up the back here, and I was hitting the brakes, um, when the ass end dipped over the little crest here to the hill started to slide a little bit but it was uh just the top layer of dirt is pretty much mud at this point yeah it should be a little bit of a wash should be good figure out the seat can adjust what is, what is, what is this Oh, XM satellite radio. Nope. No more Ope and Anthony. So I don't think the seat slides forward. Which is unfortunate. What is this? Some sort of electric mod. Oh, I think that may be the AC inverter. Might be the AC inverter. Might have to. The brakes work well enough, we'll be able to get home. No problem.
we'll just once we get her home in the spring we'll have to uh get her all uh new brakes uh, uh pads rotors up front new drums in the back i've never done dually wheels before but watch enough youtube videos i'm a youtube professional so i can handle that if not we'll take it over to crowds they can figure it out uh the generator is gone um they really said it was wasn't that good so the generator has been removed so i don't know if i'm gonna Place all the. Yeah, see, there's a 12 volt propane fridge that was in here. Just to replace that. I'll make sure all these doors are secure when we go down the road. There's your little outdoor kitchenette thing. I have to replace all the wood in these doors. Whatever. No big deal. It's gonna be a refurb. How to do it? Doors locked. Breakable nation. Vehicle protected. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so ah, uh, okay. So I I didn't know. See most of the I'm used to like the trailers and stuff like that, you have the bottles up front. So this one has a canister on board. We can fill. Uh, it's probably gonna have to be pressure tested. I don't know if there's any propane in there right now. Let's see. It says one quarter tank, so it says there's some in there. Everything seems kind of good. Like I said, the inside uh, doesn't appear to be any water in there. To get this stuff off. So, all right. So now I gotta figure out, now that we got it running, all the lights work, we can scoop this down the road. There's some plates maybe on here, whatever. We'll figure it out. And uh, so I don't know if I should just drive this home now and then come pick up the truck later or head home with the truck, go pick up Samantha, come back and that way I have a vehicle behind me in case we break down. Although it seems to be running fine. So there's only 74,000 on the odometer. Really gotta figure out the seat because holy heck, that thing sits so far back. I'm short. It looks like it slides. I wonder if it's like a piece of equipment. Yes, there's a slide. There's a slide. There's here. So, like a piece of equipment. Pull it forward, slide it forward. We're at 242, 245 on the radiator hose. And it's warm, so we got stuff flowing. Oil pressure looks good. Oh, 30. Definitely give her an oil change. Put some Rotella tea in there. I'm try to figure out. I'll have to pull the panel off the door here. So it goes a little bit and then stops. I don't know if there's something wedging it. But we'll have to use that for right now. All right. Let's see what else we gotta do to get this thing on the road. Got a little bit of snow this morning. It's been kind of a weird November. It's been really warm lately. And we get snow and it's gone by the end of the day. So, 
but we got it home the other day so we're gonna parts cannon some stuff from O'Reilly on this thing again today so I didn't shoot too much video of getting this home uh, and the drive back but it made it the 250 miles it was just one heck of a ride um, I was getting a lot of backfiring uh, through the throttle body and I think what it is I also noticed that the uh, motor wasn't getting up the temp uh, at least on the temp gauge so I either had a temp gauge that was messed up the speedometer also was bouncing all over the place so I'm gonna need a new uh, speed sensor, but this was obviously running rich. It was getting almost no power backfiring through the throttle body and just going online and taking a look at some stuff on the forums and on YouTube. It looks like I have a coolant temperature sensor that is out. So I ended up picking up one of those. We're going to end up putting that right up on the front of the engine. And I got a new thermostat just in case the one that's pretty well corroded it looks like it might need a little bit of a system flush as well but i think that was pretty much either i think it was stuck closed um it's ever the uh temperature just was not getting up it was blowing cold air but i shot a little bit of video on the ride home it, it wasn't too bad getting back but it sounded like a firing range in here it was just i had the whole doghouse open just so i could monitor the motor while we were uh, driving home uh, i had my wife ended up following me back and um, it was just nearly impossible <laughs> to shoot a lot of video and kind of talk about how the uh, ride was going home. So um, I just needed to have the doghouse off in case I needed to tinker with anything. And it was deafening in here with the backfiring, uh, especially at like 65 going down the interstate. So yeah, I was planning on taking some back roads, but I figured I could baby it up to speed. Might as well get it home as fast as possible. So all right, let's start throwing some parts at this and see if we can get it running. All right, let's get back to tinkering with the motor. I got uh, uh, another, uh, I got a temperature sensor gasket that needs to go on there. I do have the new um, thermostat. Got, I'm sorry, I got the uh, temperature sensor. I got a new one of those. I got a thermostat thermostat gasket we'll get that buttoned up on it and uh it was a little bit of a pain in the ass it seems like an easy job when you go on the internet to uh get the uh water outlet or the coolant outlet on the top of the engine but this engine has a uh let's take a look at yeah. the belt tensioner it has this bracket that came all the way down from there and it was blocking a bolt. One of them was actually attached to the outlet. And then the other one was blocking the temperature control sensor. So you couldn't get the three-quarter inch socket on there. But there's this little rod that goes from here down to here. Uh, every 350, 57 on the internet, you know, late 80s, early 90s on YouTube and, and photos on the internet, none of them had this. And I couldn't figure out, like, what you know, really what is it? But what it is, it's a... Uh, bracket that I kind of it looks like it keeps it from pushing back uh, that is the belt tensioner mount right there where, where my light is and that rod went from back there to a uh, mounting stud on the water gasket outlet so finally was able to get it off so all right let's get this new uh, thermostat and whatnot installed Right, so I ended up modifying that bracket. Um, I still needed to use part of it, the upper part, as a spacer from the uh, belt tensioner in the bracket on the front of the motor. Uh, as I said earlier, I can't find any diagrams, pictures, videos, or anything like that where they had this brace going back and attaching to the, uh, the motor where the uh, thermostat housing is. So... Uh, made a modification just cut it off so i could use it as a spacer if for some reason it changes out to be an issue well then we'll replace it but i don't see the need for it there doesn't seem to be any flex in that right now so get this mounted up got the uh all those torque down sensor installed in the back there we'll get this spacer put in and then uh get it fired up see where it goes all right got the thermostat back installed 
uh, temperature control switch. Um, I don't know if the gauge works just yet. Might end up having to replace the temperature gauge sensor, which is in the front of the engine here over by the number one cylinder on the side of the block. But we'll try this first, see if we need to replace it, if not. So, got everything in the clear. All right, let's try and fire this up. codes on the dash. There was a code 15, which was uh, low temperature. All right, still going to replace the EGR, and I got the ignition control module. I got a new one of those, so we'll get those installed here. Seems to be working. Temperature's coming up on it. It's idling fine. A little rough still um, when it's in gear. Um, that might be like the EGR's valve is stuck, so I gotta replace that. We've got the ignition control manual uh, as well. So I drove it on the block. A little bit of a hiccup uh, when you put some throttle on it. So we'll get those replaced see if that clears everything out. Might have to just double check on the timing on it. And uh, double check on my plugs. I replaced all the plugs with new plugs, but coming back after that trip, they might have all been fouled up because it was running rich. So, all right. Let's get that changed out. So when you've got a camper and you're not used to it, one of the things you make sure um, is you do a walk around and that you are not attached to shore power still. <laughs> so. Well, fix that. We got a little bit of backfire. Just a, you stomp on it. it but I'll have to check the, uh, the timing and also check uh, I mean I gotta replace the vehicle speed sensor you see where it's going like crazy over there and I, I had seen a thread where I talked about that may have something to do with you know, the advance on the spark or something to do with the TBI on it. So we'll change, I mean, that's gonna be changed anyway. It may not solve it, we may still have to check the timing. Um, just gonna make sure that the coil's putting out a decent spark as well. I didn't check to see if like, the, maybe the spark is uh, yellow or if it's a nice blue arc. We'll, we'll check that as well. But other than that, it's running nice. Thermostat is, it's still, um, it looks like it's, I don't know, around like 150. Doesn't seem to be getting too, too warm. Check that out. I put a 195 thermostat in there, so we'll see if that comes around or if I might, I'm gonna replace the uh, uh, temperature probe sensor as well. See if it may be just be a gauge issue or a sensor issue. All right, let's get this back home. Okay, got the backfiring all taken care of. Now she's running very, very smooth, very responsive under uh, under throttle, even when we're going up like a hill or something like that. So, all right. Well, now that we got this thing running pretty well. We can start redoing the inside. We actually got the motor on the camper running pretty well right now. I'm actually really happy where it is. And um, despite having thrown a bunch of parts at it, ultimately I, I think that those parts were needed 
but in the end, it was something as simple as the spark plug wires, which were causing a backfiring through the TBI. Uh, I had replaced the EGR valve, which needed to be replaced anyway. Uh, spark plugs, um, cap and rotor, the cap and rotor were corroded. They needed to be replaced anyway. The spark plugs were fouled. They needed to be replaced anyway. Uh, but I changed out the, EC, uh, the ICM and uh, the temperature control sensor, which ideally those needed to be replaced anyway. The temperature control sensor, I do know that one needed to be replaced. But I was still getting a backfiring issue. Um, through the TBI and it was frustrating to me um, as I said I'm not a mechanic um, at best I can parts can and things I know just about enough to get myself into trouble or out of trouble depending upon the situation but uh, I didn't bring my scan tools or my, my, my multimeter on day one or two despite having written myself a list of things to bring. I didn't bring them. So that pretty much kind of set the tone for how things were going to go. Ultimately, after the long drive of getting it home and working on it here in the driveway, I decided to just take a little bit of a break and then reapproach it the next day. And with a fresh mind and falling back onto my, my computer networking uh, days, where if you don't have an internet, um, it's probably not the computer that's the issue. Check your cabling. Are you plugged in? And it came down to that. I checked all the wires on the distributor. I had a diagram showing the firing order. And for some reason, I swapped um, the number two and the number seven cylinder. Don't know why. But as soon as I corrected that mistake, the engine responds beautifully to throttle right now. You can stomp on it. You don't get any backfiring through the car or through the uh, TBI, I should say and it runs really, really well. So now that we've got that situated, I'll do an oil change on it. I still need to change the vehicle speed sensor to fix the speedometer on that, and I do need to uh, change the other coolant sensor because uh, I noticed that the thermostat gauge is somewhat responding, but I'm not getting the sweep of where I thought it was, and um, the engine is up to temp based upon my infrared ther thermometer. So. Um, We'll get those things fixed, and then we'll start going on uh, redoing the inside of the of the camper. Uh, it's dry. It's just going to need some cleaning and some some freshening up. And hopefully, you can follow along, and we'll see you guys next time.